Hey church, Pastor Kent here, and um, I just want to talk about journaling for a few minutes. Now, what, co what comes to your mind when you hear the word journaling? Does it seem that like it's something only for a cute small child to do or for those extreme introverts? Maybe you've seen it for some, as something for other people, but never for yourself. Well, for starters, I don't describe myself as a cute young child nor an extreme introvert for those who know me. Personally, I've never felt this need to journal until God put a burden on my heart about two years ago. Sure, there was this, it was part of it was therapeutic as I had just gone through one of the roughest seasons of my life. But a big part of this burden to journal was I just felt like God was calling me to go grow in, into a more intimate relationship with Him. He wanted more of my devotion. He wanted more of my attention, more of my time. He wanted, God wasn't just satisfied with my quick five minute devotions that I've been doing for the past two years. He wanted me to grow in intimacy with him, not just to stay stagnant. Now, just because you journal, because I journal, doesn't mean that you will automatically have this awesome, intimate relationship with God. But what journaling does do, it helps you self-reflect where you've been, where you are in the present, and where you desire to be in the future. If you're able to self-reflect and see where God is present with you in your past, present, and future, you will be able to see ourselves deepen in our appreciation for where He's at in our past, our dependency on Him in the present, and you'll be able to see ourselves deepen in our desire to be with the Lord as we continue in our life. Even though the Bible doesn't directly command us to journal, we see in many of the Psalms self-reflection as the author shows appreciation for the past, dependency in the present, and desire to be with the Lord in the future. One of these great examples is Psalm 27, and I encourage you to read it on your own, and I hope that you are able to see all through those components, past, present, and future, and this beautiful psalm. But what about journaling today? What does that look like? The Psalms, that was a long time ago, but is there something that we can take from that and apply it to our present day? Well, it starts with being honest with God. If you struggle with something, write it down. If you need to confess something to God, write it down. Next, record some of your highlights and lowlights of your day or previous days. And then write one thing that God taught you through your Bible reading or your devotion time. And something that I always encourage people to do after they're done journaling is pray. Pray for what you wrote down, for what God's teaching you. And just pray that you can connect with God on a deeper, intimate level through this. Now, as an example, I want to read from you the journal entry that I wrote today for May 1st. I date all my journal entries, and then I write at the top of the, the reading that I did for that day. So today, I, wrote, uh, I read an introduction article to the Bible. As uh, Amber and I finished reading through the Bible for the last year and a half, and we're starting to go through it again, and uh, this was something that I felt like I should read before I go through it again. So, my journal starts as this. Yesterday... I finally finished cleaning the carpet downstairs. It's been on my to-do list for the past few months. Plus, it's been something Amber has wanted me to get done so we can start decorating the basement and host people over to our home. For today's reading, I read one of the intro articles to the Bible in the CSB Study Bible. One interesting thing that I read is about reading the Bible for transformation. While reading through the Bible the last year and a half with Amber, I felt like I was reading the Bible to get an overview, but as we start to read it through it again, I want to be, I want to make more of a heart connection with what I read, not just reading it to gain knowledge. So I, hopefully you saw, I wrote something that I, a couple things that happened to me the last couple of days, and I wrote a few thoughts from what I uh, gathered and what I found interesting in my Bible reading and trying to make a, a heart connection with it. Hopefully you saw the past uh, and what God was teaching me and what I was doing and, and how to serve others well, how to serve my wife well. And then my present and what I was reading and how God was convicting me and what I was reading. And in the future, and what I plan to do is read the Bible more for heart transformation, not for knowledge. It's this past, present, and future 
um, kind of uh, thing that I, is taking place in this journal entry. Now, something for me personally that I do at the end of every journal is I make a to-do list. I'm a list guy. I need to see what I need to do. So for me, number one thing I always put on my to-do list is pray. I encourage you to pray after you're done journaling and just pray and thank God and just be in this attitude of humility and, and thankfulness for what God is doing in your life. Uh, a couple other things that I do on my to-do list is what I need to get done for work, so whether it's sermon prepping, whether it's doing administrative stuff for hype. Um, today, uh, the thing on my to-do list was this journaling video, and so I can cross that off when I'm done with this. But I encourage you, I encourage you to journal. I encourage you to go back and reflect on God, how God has been faithful in your life, and to give God the glory as He transforms your life to be more Christ-like. Now, for many of us, starting a new habit can be hard to implement into our daily routine. But don't worry, you're not alone. Just because you miss a few days or a few weeks doesn't mean you can just give up. Early on in my journaling journey, there were times I didn't journal for, journal for an entire month. But there were other times where I was pretty consistent on a daily basis. And that was when my journaling and my daily Bible reading were happening almost every day. And that's when I found the sweetest intimacy that I've had with God. Now, maybe you don't have a journal, and, but you want to still try to figure out how this thing works out. And you, you're curious and you, and you want to give this a shot. Well, a little birdie told me that Pastor Dave has 15 to 20 journals that he wants to give out. So I highly encourage you to reach out to Dave, to reach out to me, and join me in this journey of journaling.